Hello, welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm going to be showing that the derivative using the first principle, like using the actual definition of a derivative um, of e to the x is e to the x. Well, we know that because we've used that a lot in differentiation and in integration, but how do we establish that from the definition of a derivative? And that's what I'm gonna show you today, and I'm gonna take you from the beginning to the end explaining every single step. Let's go on the journey. So I'm gonna start with the definition of a derivative, which simply tells us that if f of x is whatever function you're given, in this case it's e to the x, then f prime of x is the limit as h goes to 0 of um, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And so this is the definition I've used for all the proofs. I used it for proving that the derivative of sine x is equal to cosine x, used it for cosine x, used it for ln of x, and now we're using it for e to the x. Okay, so at this point I'm going to introduce it. So f prime of x will be e to the x plus h. Well, the limit, let's not forget. The limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. So this is what we're going to be working with. Let's go to the next line. Um, this is the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x. If you apply the laws of exponents, here we're going to have multiplied by e to the h minus e to the x over h. And this gives us um, the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x into e to the h minus 1, if we factor out e to the x. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this h just under this, because now all these terms are dealing with h, and this one is not. It's just multiplying that. And we can move ahead and uh, rewrite this limit, okay? So I'm going to rewrite this limit and say this implies the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x multiplied by the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h. Okay, so that's that limit law that says that the limit of a product will be the product of the limits. Okay, and that's what I just applied here, and that makes a lot of sense. So what is the limit of e to the x as h goes to 0? Because e to the x is not a function containing anything h, that stays, it is not affected, so we can go to our next line and say this is the same thing as e to the x, okay? Because there's no h in this function. So no matter what happens to h, e to the x stays the same. But on this side, we'll be multiplying by this function, which is um, the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h. So what I need to deal with is this. What will this give me? Okay, so, well, for, for our, for our um, derivative and what we've been doing all along to be true, if it's going to be e to the x, then this must be 1. I've seen people say this, is a, this itself is an identity. Well, uh, by the time I'm done, we can all agree that, yes, it's an identity. You just know that that is a definition, that e to the whatever minus 1 over whatever is going to, as h goes to 0, if you take the limit, will always be equal to 1. But I want to show you how that works out. Okay, so, so I'm just going to leave this alone because there's nothing else to do. It just be this multiplied by this. So I'm just going to keep putting this dot and do my work as we continue. Okay, so this would be equal to, um, before we go on, I want to do a transformation here. Okay, so I'm going to say let the numerator, okay, n, let e to the h, or let e to the h minus 1 be equal to n. Okay, so it means I'm going to transform this so it changes. If I make this, then I can easily say that 
Let me break this board into two. Not break, divide the space. <laughs> okay, this implies that e to the h, okay, that's the implication, that e to the h will now be equal to 1 plus n. I hope you can see that. I just move my 1 to this side, so it becomes 1 plus n on this side. Um, on this basis, from here, what you notice is that as h goes to 0, which we've been using here, as h goes to 0, this is going to 1. This expression is going to 1 minus 1, which is 0. So n is going to 0. Okay, so because I'm trying to change whatever is there from e to the h to something I can deal with easily. So as h goes to 0, this expression will go to, to 0, which means n goes to 0. That's one thing. Um, but I need this h, okay? Um, we have to isolate h from this expression. So if we want to isolate h, we can say from this equation that ln of e to the h will be equal to ln of 1 plus n. Okay? And that tells me that h will be equal to ln of 1 plus n. You see that? That makes life a lot easier. So we can go back to this. So I'm going to put this as those transformations I just did. Now the simple transformation that we did right here has made the world a better place to live. Okay, now watch what's going to happen. We're going to rewrite this line. It's going to be e to the x multiplied by the limit. Now remember, I'm not going to be writing h going to 0 anymore because I've replaced h here with n. So but how will n be behaving? We established it that as h goes to 0, n also goes to 0. So I'm just going to continue, but I'm going to be using n now. As n goes to 0 of the expression, this original expression, e to the h minus 1, remember, is now equal to n. And then what is h? h is now the natural log of 1 plus 1, ln 1 plus n rather. Okay, that's what we have. It's looking beautiful. Now, see what happens. I want you to look at this as if I wrote 2 over 3. That's what this is, 2 over 3. But what I want to do is, I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look really weird. I want it to look like this. I'm going to flip it. But you know, when you flip a fraction, you have changed the value of the fraction. In order to restore a flipped fraction, you take the reciprocal of it, then it goes back to this. So that's what I'm going to do. This fraction, I'm going to flip it and take the reciprocal of it, and this is what you're going to get. You're going to have e to the x multiplied by the limit as n goes to 0 of 1 over a flipped this. If I flip this, it's going to become ln 1 plus n over n. Now you see me. <laughs> okay, with this, we have established something that's going to save us from the destruction that is to come. Okay, now, maybe I should write one more step here. Okay, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that side. So, if I put one more step here, this means it's e to the x multiplied by the limit as n goes to 0 of 1 over... Instead of writing this over n, I'm just going to write 1 over n beside the limit, ln 1 plus n. Okay, now remember that law of logarithm that says that when you have a number multiplying a logarithm, you can take that number and make it an exponent on this side. Yes, you know it. So that's what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to say... Okay, so with this transformation now, it's very easy for you to start seeing that we have n. 
Okay, I'm going to apply the limit law, which says that the limit of a um, uh, rational function is the rational limit of the functions. Okay, I'm just going to make that clear. So, um, the next line is going to be e to the x times the limit as n goes to 0 of 1 divided by the limit as ln as n goes to 0 of ln of 1 plus n to the 1 over n. Okay, now we know that this is a constant. Okay, I decided to separate it so you see what I just did. Um, in this case, I'm going to have e to the x multiplied by 1 over... Now, in this case, remember that the limit of a function is the function of the limit. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is move this, natu this limit inside here and take the natural log of that limit. So what it's going to be will be ln of the limit as um, n goes to 0 of 1 plus n to the 1 over n. You see that? Now this is the definition of E. Now actually there are two definitions and I think one is more popular. So we're going to take the one that's we're going to just, I'm just going to show you both of them. So E is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the n. Okay, but with some algebraic manipulation, you can actually rewrite this and say that this is the same thing as the limit as n goes to 0 of 1 plus n to the 1 over n. So you can see this and this are exactly the same thing and you can define E to be this or this. But because this is what I need in this case, I'm just going to use it here. So I'm going to wipe this off and put this back. Okay, so I have e to the x multiplied by 1 over the natural log of e. Now what's the natural log of e? It's 1. Okay, so that gives me e to the x multiplied by 1 over 1. And I have f prime of x which is what we're talking about, the derivative of e to the x from first principle is going to be e to the x. This is a beautiful way to stop. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.